Dairy Queen's Miracle Treat Day has been celebrated for over 35 years and today was another day to celebrate. Our Brett Holden has more. Dairy Queen's famous blizzards are loved, but on Miracle Treat Day, it is the love Dairy Queen has for their customers that takes center stage. Dairy Queen's been doing this for over 35 years and just the last Canada's been doing it. And finally, the U.S. came on board because they saw what we were doing for our children's hospitals. So all across Canada, they're, they're participating. You get huge participation, and for us, it, it means a lot. For years, Dairy Queen Canada has used Miracle Treat Day to help families get their children the help they need. You know, I, I can get a tear thinking about it because it means a lot. So, um, and to have them come help out, it really makes you see what, what you've done for them. Sophie Reed has been involved with the event for more than four years now. Thank you to the efforts of Miracle Treat Day. So she had a stroke in utero. Um, and when she was born, we noticed pretty much immediately that there was something going on. And our first stop was to the doctors that we knew in the stallery. And they confirmed our thoughts and our fears that she did have a stroke and she does have CP. And her brother has had a similar path as well. So Dylan was uh, born with a rare disease. And we were air transferred to the stallery from birth where it took them about six weeks to finally figure out what it was because it is a rare disease. Um, from that we were on a life journey of what his disease entails. We were told he wouldn't make it past five years old. He's nine now and thriving. This year's goal is to raise at least $25,000. Brett Holden, New Cap News. Winds have been blowing forest fire smoke across British Columbia, Alberta and Saskatchewan. Lloyd Minster is caught in the middle and on top of that is under a heat warning. In this week's Healthy Living, I took a look at what we're experiencing here in the border city. If you've looked out the window today or been outside, you may have noticed a haze up in the sky and a faint smoky smell. Now it isn't a low-lying cloud, but instead forest fire smoke. Over the last few days, much of the Midwest region has been seeing smoke cloud the skies. Our weather specialist Gerard Lampow says the smoke is blowing in from B.C. and Alberta wildfires. But one of the reasons is, and if you look at this map here, imagine if you will a dome-shaped area here where this high pressure or this upper ridge has become dominant here. You can see the cloud cover and it's arching along the jet stream there. Of course, factor in the smoke from the fires in BC. There are also fires on the prairies as well. Lampow says we most likely won't be seeing blue skies in the next few days. Well, as long as these fires have been active in BC, I think we're stuck with this for quite some time yet. And as long as the prevailing winds are from the west or the southwest, we're going to be seeing these conditions. The smoke can affect each person differently, and pharmacist Brooke Elsifer says there are certain populations it can affect most. They're very young, um, just because their lungs may not be fully developed, and the elderly, as they get older, their lungs can decline. Um, also, certain people who have a cardiovascular illness or a respiratory illness are also at an increased risk with the poor air quality. Alsifer says the smoke could cause some people to cough and create breathing difficulty or irritate their eyes or throat. And if they start experiencing symptoms, it's recommended that they reduce their outdoor activity time and stay inside or just be out for shorter periods of time. If someone does have respiratory issues, Altifer says they need to be prepared if the smoke does start to affect them. It can um, definitely increase their symptoms of asthma and people with COPD. Um, so it would be a definitely a good idea for those if they have a rescue inhaler to make sure that they're keeping it on by them, with them, um, if they're going to be outside during this time. Unfortunately, it sounds like the smoke is here to stay and combined with the intense heat we're experiencing, Border City residents need to limit their exposure outside and take frequent breaks indoors. Paradise Hill is hosting their annual Summer Bash and Heather Kleigis shares with us some of those details and more in this week's What's Happening. It's a busy weekend in this area and coming up on Saturday night, 
Make Tracks for Paradise Hill as they're hosting their annual Summer Bash. And this year, you've got a chance to see the Washboard Union live. And you've heard them on Real Country. They've got huge hits like Shot of Glory and Maybe It's the Moonshine. And also part of the entertainment for the evening, Hey Romeo. They are past winners of the CCMA Award for Group of the Year. Fantastic country music as part of the Paradise Hill Summer Bash coming up on Saturday night. It all helps out the Paradise Hill Community Center. And you can get your tickets a couple ways by stopping by Paradise Hill Ranch in Western Wear or going online eventbrite.ca. It's a salute to Clan Donald's firefighters and first responders as part of the Clan Donald Country Fair that's taking place on Saturday. You've got a chance to head out for the full day. They're going to start your day with a pancake breakfast. The prairie dogs are there to entertain. There's face painting. There's going to be a parade, a chance to play bingo, kids races, tractor pedal pushers. Greg T, the magician, is going to be there. A whole full day of fun for the entire family is coming up on Saturday at the Clan Donald Country Fair. We want you to win yourself a copy of Sting and Shaggy. They have teamed up together for the first time, so a little bit of reggae, a little bit of pop, but a lot of fun music on this album, including the song Morning is Coming. If you'd like to win a copy, it's really easy. All you have to do is email your name and daytime phone number to tvcontest at newcap.ca. We want to say thanks to John at Universal Music Canada for setting us up with the music. And if the heat this week has been getting to you, tomorrow the answer is cool lemonade. King's Energy Group is hosting a lemonade stand and barbecue coming up tomorrow. All proceeds going to go to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, I hope you have a great one. I'm Heather Kleges, and that's what's happening. This is New Cap Sports. Tennis fans, are <coughs> excuse me, tennis fans around the country are taking the exploits of Denis Shapovalov and others at Rogers Cup. But locally, the excitement is building for the 27th annual Paul Douglas Invitational at Bud Miller Park. Josh Ryan has more. The Lloydminster Tennis Association has had small but steady growth in recent years. Now after record numbers at the Border City Classic in July, the Paul Douglas Invitational has more than 50 competitors and features 10 different competitive divisions for the first time. Well, it gives us a chance to grow. Like uh, before we don't advertise, we don't, uh, you know, it's just word of mouth thing and a uh, little on the uh, internet. Now that we start to hold these extra events in here, that's going to draw more people. Having two additional courts has opened up more than 10 hours of available court time, dramatically improving the tournament schedule. Last year and the year before, we ran our tournament so tight that if we'd had uh, any rain at all, we wouldn't have finished. Instead of having to play back-to-back, uh, -back, now we can space some of the people out and let them rest between their matches. It has also helped for lessons booking throughout the summer, which is helping to improve individual players. For our lesson programs now, we're not interfering so much with the public and our lesson program was getting to a point where we were maxed out all the time. We will be able to increase that a little bit. Right now, Shoplin is satisfied with both the tournament and lesson structure that's occurring with the two new courts, and with the 2020 Summer Games on the horizon, this will give a new opportunity for tennis expansion in the area. It's going to showcase the city, and uh, we always uh, try to draw more kids in if we can, and, and bringing bring them in to play in, in something like the Summer Games, that may well be a draw for us. Josh Ryan, Newcap Sports. Area producers are signaling an average production year in this week's Agriculture Report. Gerard Lampau heads south of the border city to check out crops. Rodney Wilde has been in agriculture all his life, but says he's been actively farming in the last 15 years. He has land in different parts of the region. We have land down in the, at the end of Highway 17 south towards Marsden, and, and that area, it's always drier in the spring, so it gives us a, an opportunity to start down there, and we kind of follow the, follow the dryness or the ability to, to carry on seeding. Soil conditions and moisture determine where Wilde starts to seed first. He started seeding around May 8th and went without a stop. He has canola in this field. 
here in Marshall's looking good. We we were hit a little bit with hail down south as well, so um, we got some fields that are looking really good and some that aren't looking so good. He is optimistic about his good canola fields with a yield of at least 55 to 60 bushels per acre. He also has wheat in this area. Actually, uh, things around this river course area are looking really good. We uh, June, we were struggling with a little bit of moisture early on, and uh, and then since about the time of the Paradise Valley Fair, and we've had, oh gosh, 10, 12 inches of rain, so it uh, everything's looking great. He will look forward to the 25-degree heat to get them to harvest. Interestingly, the wheat in this field is not being grown to make bread. This is a soft white variety called Andrew, and uh, this is some commercial production for us, and uh, we contract pretty much the majority of it or all of it to the uh, Husky ethanol plant in Lloydminster. So this is going towards gas. Try and drive our gas prices down a little bit. That's useful. <laughs> Gerard Lampau, Newcap News.